Hello, my little goblins. We're back at it again, and this time we're feeling the flow. But we're, we're going to be playing Utopia because I've been watching uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexo lately, and you know what? I've been feeling that flow. So we're we're looking at Utopia, right? Uh, what does this deck do? Well, this deck does multiple things. It can OTK, but it actually can set up a pretty good board. So how are we going to set up that board? Well. This the way this deck can set up a board is they can use Dragoneer, abuse Dragoneer to summon uh, number eighty nine Diablos, which can snipe a um, monster from an opponent's extra deck, especially tier limit. You can hit, hit Kit Kalios, and then you can use this card with the Phantom Knight rank up, which we can search off of our Zexal con construction. Um, and with that, we can go into Kaliuga. Uh, but typically, your best board that you're going to be seeing is you would set up a Utopic Draco Future, you set up Utopic Dra uh, Dragoneer, and then you can set up a Utopia Ray with uh, Trap Negate or Extra Monster Negate. Uh, I would say Trap Negate because um, people are running evenly. Uh, and then you'd obviously have the rank up spell so you can rank up uh, the number 89 to go into uh, Kali Yuga. Uh, Kali Yuga pretty much makes it so your opponent will not be able to OTK you and you pretty much can stop their entire turn. I will say against tier limit though, I am a little skeptical because Kali Yuga is not as good against tier limit because it doesn't prevent uh, the activation of cards inside of their graveyard. So that is a little concerning. Um, now you might want to say, I, I would say, instead of Degusa Emerald, you probably should run maybe Abyss Dweller. But even then, it, like with the materials that we get, it's really hard to go into an additional four. So you're almost going to have to be picking between uh, I'm going to go into Topic Draco Future, or I'm going to go into Dweller. If you know your opponent is going to be playing... Um, if you know your opponent is going to be playing Tier Limit, Dweller might be the better option. Uh, but this is a build we got for now. Um, and I think it's pretty good. I think it's a solid build. So we're going to go into some matches. We'll see how the deck performs. And then we will go to the recap and talk about it. All right. Hello, we're here with game number one against Law. So this game I wanted to show first because this shows how the combo works. So we open Onomatopoeia, which allows us to go into... Uh, we, so pretty much what you want to have in your opening hand or try to get is you want Uto uh, Utopic Onomatopoeia, Zababa, and you want do, do do When you get all three of these in your hand, you can do full combo. So this is what the full combo looks like. You make sure you have to make sure you use these two cards because the reason why you want to use these two cards is because the Zababa can bring back uh, Onomatopoeia from the graveyard, and if Onomatopoeia is on the field, you can use Dodo's secondary effect to special summon it from the graveyard. So you can pretty much reuse it. You always want to be summoning Sage for 99% of the time, and then these two cards. So we went to that math mech card. The math mech card allowed us to grab Astral Topea. And then we used the math mech card and Utopic Sage to go into Utopic Draco Future. Now we have a monster negate and we have Astral Topia to play with this uh, Sage. So we grab Eggsy Change Tactics here because we're going to draw a ton of cards. But normally, if you did not have Zexal Construction in hand, this is where you grab Zexal Construction. So we go into double. Double's gonna let us grab. So your op opponent opponents will do this all the time. So when you well when the effect from uh, Sage activates for you to add a card to your hand, they imperm it, and then you just chain Utopia to Double's effect, which lets you just draw a card. Well, it lets you add double, and then you could dodge the Imperm. Now we go into Prime, draw another card. Go into you tape of Dragoneer. And if you're wondering why we didn't draw our cards, because this card can miss triggers. So when we use double on the stack, uh, we actually miss the trigger. So technically, you don't want to double, but if they Imperm, you have to. 
So now we're going to go to Diablo's Mind Hacker. And then we use Diablo's Mind Hacker. He's not playing Tier Limit right now. We would just probably banish Kikalios. Uh, but he is playing like a trap deck with Waking Dragon. So we did get rid of uh, the Last Warrior. And by the way, with Kali Yuga, trap decks are like instant wins. So if you ever play against a trap deck with Kali Yuga, it's an instant win. Uh, since I know he's a trap deck, I just summon Ray. Just a, for a follow up turn. And now I do this Kali Yuga. He was trying to move to combat. That's the reason why I did this, because this would automatically negate evenly match. Uh, and then my opponent just concedes. Hello, we're here with game number two, and this time we're going to start showing some matches that are pretty rough. That's going to be pretty rough for us. So we're going against, we're going second. Which, don't mind, don't let me, I'll say this deck can OTK pretty easily, but we're going to play against Tier Limit. And they have pretty much every card you could ever imagine. Uh, we do Max C here, which you would think would help us, but we only draw one card. So... I reinforcement, see if he has Ash, but the thing is, he has, because uh, Tier Limit's so cool and all, he has Double Shuffler. So even if he Ash, Callbot's just bad here, it really doesn't do that much. So he, him using Crime was a little sus, but then you see he discards the Kalbeck. So with him discarding Kalbeck, I just call by the Grave the Kalbeck. I, need, I just want him to use the Shufflers, to be completely honest, so I don't have to deal with him later. And if you're wondering why, is because when a card gets shuffled back into the deck with uh, Perlino, per Perlino out, it can you can he gets a free pop from it. So I, I prefer he uses shufflers ahead of time. Now we max C, he maxes me, pretty cool. Kind of wish I got Sage out before this max C, but. And then he goes into Rakelios. Neato. Isn't it neat when they have uh, King, of the, King of the Swamp in the graveyard? So I go into Utopia Double. Utopia Double's effect's going to activate. Again, I need to make sure he activates Rakelios' effect. I'm probably going to lose this game here. But on the off chance he, go, he tries to go a little buck wild, right? Um, my only hope right now is if he goes buck wild... Right? Um, I can... Like, if he tries to special summon, like, activate more, more triggers than he should, um, I can maybe draw into another level 4. That, that's all I'm looking for right now. Because the, sa the Sage's special summons, not once per turn. It's just, it's just inherent. Alright, so he negates the double, whatever. I still get the searches, which is confined, is what I wanted. Here comes Bringer. And there comes my rank up. And he is going to spot special summoning. And I whiffed. And then he's going to fuse and go into heart. Again, very bad heart. Very bad heart. I have nothing on the board. It really wasn't a reason to go into heart. Uh, so if he doesn't have any more mill effects, uh, he's kind of fucked. And I draw into the Utopic card. I just activate this anyway, just so he activates his last Shuffler. Um, he does not have any more uh, Tier Limit monsters in the graveyard anymore, so he can't actually activate the Field Spell. So now we just go in Utopia Double. We go into Prime. Activate Rank Up. Like, it's really annoying because you have to really pay attention to what your opponent has for you to actually do, like, for, for any chance of winning. Since we since we top decked, uh, well, since we added Bringer to hand, now we add this. Azor Strike lets us attack everything on the board. We're going to make sure Kaleida Heart attack goes down. Make sure you kill Rikalios first because it protects all the other monsters. And then boom, 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 boom goes the dynamite, and goodbye, eat shirt. All right, we're here, game number three, and our hand's actually looking pretty okay. It's not, it's not the best, not the greatest. It's all right. We use Utopic Change to search for our other card, go into double. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not doing full combo, I can't do full combo with this uh, board, unfortunately. 
uh, because you need the other card, Zododo, to actually do this. So we're going to use Utopia Double. Boom, boom. Add the double or nothing, which is going to get... We're either going to send it to the graveyard with Ash Utopia, or we're going to send it with uh, Construction. Either way, we it looks like we sent and then added. It really doesn't matter, because we are going to... Um, We are going to go in Utopia Ray. And that gets added. Boom. We are going to use Zexal Destruction so we can set up our uh, negate. So. Alright. Now it's our opponent's turn. They're playing Tier Element. And they have Agito. Isn't that fun? There's not so much fun to play against. So. He has like 30 triggers activating, so we got Reinhardt. So with the Gravekeeper's Trap, when he activates this, this is when we go for our move. Um, because this, he wastes his discard, and we can actually negate everything on board. So Kali Yuga. I am going to say this, so Kali Yuga, you can still 100% lose against Tier Limit with Kali Yuga. So do not think you're, you're, you're free. He goes into Baron de Fleur. Tax kills my card. Okay, cool. You know, I blow up the whole backboard. He adds, He's going to add Havnis to hand. Okay, cringe. I act it. Uh, I'm going to attack first, obviously, before I activate Reinforcement of the Army. Uh, so, this is. I know he has Havnis in the hand. So, I go into Gagaga, -ga, and I don't bother using Gagaga's -ga ability. I just go straight into Utopic Future. Into Draco. Tactically, what I could have done is I could have used Gagaga -ga -ga to bring back um, number 89. And then I believe uh, if it Eximon is special summoned by the effect. Oh, never mind. It would not have worked. For some reason, I thought it would, it would come back, but it doesn't. But I could have used it to just get another body on board, but Havness would have been annoying to deal with. So. Uh, let's get to the next one and GG. Hello, this is game number four. And yeah, so you guys wondering, these games take place between gold and plat. Uh, this is day one of the season. So the gold is actually last season's plat and the plat are actually last season's gold diamond. So, uh, most of these games are actually in platinum though. All right. So we go into Utopia double. And for anyone watching this in the future, Diamond was the highest level last season. So I know there's Master Rank now, but this is the first season of Master Rank. <laughs> All right, so we go into this. So the reason why we had to do this play is because Shifter kind of bones the living fuck out of us, right? Um, so we go in Utopia Double, oh, Utopia Ray. Oh, actually, you know, we, we actually fucked up pretty hard here. Uh, because we summoned Utopia. It's not really that crazy of a fuck up. Because, like, we really had nothing to do here. Like, we have, like, no plays. Because everything's getting banished. Honestly, I feel like I just committed too much to this. Uh, I think, I think that's my main fuck up here. I just committed way too much. I just wanted the extra... I think that's what I was doing this for. I think I was doing this for the extra draw from Tactic. Uh, so we're going to Ash Extravagance. And then he plays Desires. And then he plays Lightning Storm. Wipes my back row. Then he sets two. He's playing a Grand Maju deck. Uh, so I actually... Uh, it's actually kind of funny here. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to Ash his Maxi. We're gonna add the our cards off Automatopia. Boom, boom. Here's Utopia. So the big fuck up here was I knew this was Gred Marju. I was actually saying it in the stream, uh, but I didn't activate Utopia because f for some reason I thought I was gonna be able to activate in the damage step. So that was, well, that was a bit of a misplay. It would have been kind of cool to kill this, but. This actually, me not killing Grand Maju 
you're gonna see it actually pays off. It's actually it's actually insane that we didn't kill Grand Maju here. So we Ash here. He bounces back. He bounces back my 99. But he doesn't bother changing Grand Maju to attack. I could have technically negated the attack, but he doesn't bother. Now that's gonna really hurt him. Because I draw rank up magic. And now I play I play it, right? I play this out. And now, dude, so. Think about Alpha. How does Alpha work? He, I have to have more attack on board than he does, right? For him to special summon. He can't special summon it now. And we're going to make sure he can never special summon again in his life. So we summon Diablos Hacker. We use Diablos Hacker's effect, which it doubles the amount of banished cards he has. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I banish this and it banishes every other card. So he only has seven cards left in his deck. So now we can just wait it out. We don't have to make a move because if he tries to attack with Gren Maju, I can make this card go to zero attack. Oh, Dragoneer. All I need is Dragoneer to win this. The Ashes. Harpies. Fine. Your turn, Bucko. Changes to attack. Tax. Boom. GG. Bye-bye. Hello, this is game number five. And I know that last one was pretty spicy, but our hand is absolute ass, so we just pass. Um, so the reason why I pass with this hand is because if I normal summon uh, Onomatopoeia and then activate the ability to summon Go Go Go, and he has Imperm, I just instantly lose the game. I, there's no way I play through it. I'd rather just wait until I draw something that lets me extend a little more. I max see him. He goes into full armor master. And honestly, I was like, oh, this guy's an idiot. He didn't go into Baron. It's actually more annoying because this card's a pop. I finally got something. Honestly, surprised he didn't pop me. I go in Utopic Sage. I'm like, sweet. He has fucking, dude, I'm Ghost Mourner. I barely see this card. Anyone ever use it? I activate Astropea. He activates Effect Veiler. I actually make the decision to fucking droplet. Just so I can get the effect off. Because I can add uh, Onomatopoeia to my hand. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Because I was thinking about it. With him having Shargna, there's no way I can do anything. So I grab Pickup to force him to use Shargna. He pops, he pops my pickup. Because it, it literally does not matter. Because if he has Shardna, he'd just interrupt my play regardless. I wouldn't be able to do anything. So now that Shardna is not on the board, I take 3k. I have to top deck something decent. If I don't top deck anything, I lose the game. I top deck another pickup. GG, we're chilling. We're being chilling. Honestly, there was a lot of cards we could have top decked there. Uh, just to give you an idea, if we top decked uh, Zobobo, right? Which we had three in the deck, or Onomatopoeia, or our own Onomatopoeia, or that. Like, we had a lot of top decks, so I don't want to say it's, it, this wasn't really that lucky. You know what I mean? Like, we had a lot of top decks. Uh, we had way more answers than we had bricks. So we, we play on a pair, boom. Okay, we bring back that. He DD crows it because he's a fucking rat. God, these cards are so annoying, dude. So this is actually hilarious to me. So we end up going into Gaga Ga Magician because we have no other plays. And we're like, we're just gonna go Utopic Drake of Future. There's no there's no way he out he can out it besides unless he has like Imperm or a uh, Monster Negate. Or not a Monster Negate, a Kaiju. Right? He attacks that. He legit has like I think he might have banished most of his answers. Which is funny. Boom. Dead. And I'm 99, I am a hot, like 99% sure 
he activates Gizmak to try and bait Draco's effect because he ha he because he's he's eight access. So I know for a fact Alpha is his other out, right? If he plays Alpha, Alpha outs this, right? So he baits it out with Gizmak. Gizmak comes out. I don't negate. He he concedes. GG. Goodbye. Hello, we're here with the six in final game, and we are going first. Our hand's actually pretty decent. As long... So, I actually get punished so bad for grabbing fucking Astrotopia. I don't even think grabbing Astrotopia was bad. I think it was completely fine, completely f normal. Uh, but I'm going to get bodied so hard for that. Uh, so, I activate Automatopoeia, which lets me grab my other... So, I have all three. I normal summon. He maxis. I'm going to play through maxi. I don't care. He's a rat. Boom, boom. Special summon. Special summon. Going into Sage. All he has to do is ash the shage or impermit, and he ashes it, which means I am not going to be able to rank up using my rank up spell and sniping his extra deck. So that's really annoying. I'm not going to be able to do Kali Yuga now, uh, all because I did not grab Sage when I should have just grabbed it. I was being greedy because I was like, oh, I can just summon it off of Sage, so it does, does it really matter. It does matter. Uh, so now we go into the math mech card. He plays uh, Havness because, again, our opponent is a person of the vermin variety. Um, we add a Gaga Coat to the hand because this card uh, can combo. Uh, since I have the other cards in the graveyard, if I normal summon it, I can use his ability to summon back Onomatopoeia. And then um, it, when that resolves, I can bring back Go Go Go. So that, that's the only reason why I did that. This is a good bait card. He goes into heart. He bounces back my card. He's a rat. Again, we already know this. I send... So this is massive, by the way. I send Sage to the graveyard like a psychopath. I go into Utopia double. And then I activate Utopia double. Because I'm like thinking, I'm like, I have zero shot of winning this. The only shot I have is for him to somehow not be able to take out my Dragonair with 6k attack. And then I add Tornado Bringer. I equipped it so I can get this activation off. So you go into Titan Titanic Galaxy, right? So this is huge. He fucks up once. He fucks up pretty big, though. Like, his fuck up is enormous. So, honestly, I'm not going to get any of this shit. Kelbeck, whatever. You have 300 cards in your hand. Doesn't matter if you mill 20 more. That's how I look at it. So he's going to activate Kaleido Heart's effect. So this is where he fucks up horribly. Right? So he activates Kaleido Heart's effect. And then he activates Heartbeat to get rid of my back row while this is on the field. I get a free negate. And you might think, oh, that's not that big of a deal. This card, my, my Utopia Dra Drago is untargetable right now. And you might be saying, well, there's he's at 8,000 life points. It doesn't really matter, right? That can't matter. Well, when your opponent doesn't pay attention to what happens on the board because they're playing a deck that plays itself, right? They're playing a deck where all they have to do is hit yes on every interaction. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I, I had to negate the field spell because if I don't negate the field spell, he could pop Tornado Bringer. I need Tornado Bringer up there to protect my cards. So this is what I'm talking about. He activates Cyberstein like an absolute lunatic when I have a 7300 attack monster on the board. And he has five monsters in attack. So now you're about to watch a tier limit player scurry to try and change all his monsters to defense. Alright. So here's one. He goes into Sprite Elf. I know he has Solik, but he can only activate it once. So, one of these cards, like, he needs to have at least two monsters in attack for me to kill him. So, there's one Soliac. He's going to activate that, which is fine. Literally does nothing. Agito. Sure, why not? Activate Agito, too. Minus five. I, le I love the 700 activations. So, now we, we're seeing this. Kaleida Heart activates. He can't target my Dragoneer. He can only target Tornado Bringer, right? He has no other way of interacting with this card. 
Sholiac does not negate the attack, the, the attack bonus, because it's done by uh, Utopia Double. So, sends back. Here comes Drax Tepelia. Wait, Drax Tepelia makes it so I don't even bother playing Zababa. Because if I summon it, he just makes it a level 1 and I can't XZ it anyway. So I go into battle, I attack, he activates Soliac again. Negates my card, he still has one monster left in attack mode. Not enough. Goodbye, you little vermin. So, GG, we're going to go to the recap now, and we'll talk about how the deck performed. Welcome to the recap, and thank you for watching this far. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot, and it helps me to my road to 10,000 subs. And eventually we'll pass Mr. Beast. Also, join our Discord. Our Discord is linked down below. We host tournaments every Friday. Tournament rules are posted inside the Discord. So, let's talk about how the deck performed, right? The deck was actually pretty litty. I'm not even going to lie. I actually enjoyed this a lot. I was role-playing a lot to myself when I was playing. And uh, it was a blast. We climbed from gold 5. We started at gold 5. And we ended off the stream at plat three. Uh, I'm gonna see how far I can climb with this. Um, I'm probably gonna play this more uh, probably tomorrow and maybe over the weekend. And I'll see how high I can climb with this deck. But um, yeah, we were able to climb to plat three. Not too bad. Remember, this is first day of the season. Uh, so. Bear in mind that, that we're pretty much playing against plat diamond players because how the seasons worked, how they reset. Um, but yeah, I think that the deck was pretty solid. Do I think it's broken? Yes, I do actually. No, I don't. The deck's obviously not broken, not even remotely broken. It's a pretty... It's definitely a very, very rogue deck. Let's just say that. It's extremely rogue. On a power level of 1 to 10, I'd probably rate this like a 6.5. So the reason I'm going to give this a 6.5 is because you need like 3 cards to make your field, right? Like most most car most decks are like 1 card combos. This card I have to have Onomatopoeia, Gaga Gaga Coat, and then Gaga Gaga Glev. Like, I need three cards for me to actually make my board. Uh, and if my opponent has any interruption, my board ends up changing. I would say on a difficulty scaling, though, this is a pretty difficult deck to pilot. Uh, and the only reason why is because there's so, there's a lot of lines of play and, like, things to think about. Uh, and you really need to know the matchups well. Like, when you go, if you're able to go into Diabolus... And you see your opponents playing tier. Obviously, it makes the matchup a little more easy. But like, if they're not playing tier, you kind of have to know what they have in their deck for you to try and uh, set a game plan around um, executing that, like uh, stopping them from what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a relatively uh, high skill cap deck to play. Personally, I know you guys might not think so, but I th I thought it was. Uh, OTK obviously with this deck's like pretty easy. Like if you're able to get Utopia double off and then grab a uh, double or nothing, pretty fucking easy because you just one shot anything 2,000 attack or lower. But other than that, it's not like the OTK is actually kind of fun in this deck because like you can OTK that way. You could OTK by going into Dragoneer and then that card summoning Utopia Ray and attaching uh, Zero Strike to the card so he attacks everything. Oh no, there's a lot of cool interactions with this deck. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I wish there was... Like, there's some some cards I wish... like A lot of these cards are like net negatives, which is kind of annoying. Like, Zexal Construction is a net negative. I use this card to search another card. But I have to use a card in my hand. So it's like... I, it's pretty much I send a card in my hand to the deck to tutor out what I actually want. But I lose, since I used the card for that, it's like I lost the card. 
So these are there's a lot of net negatives in the deck, which I do not like. I'm not a fan of net negatives. Onomatopoeia, the fact that uh, it, it it sends for cost is really annoying because that means that like I send for cost and then if they have Ash, it just I just went down a card. I went down two cards instead of one, which is really annoying. But other than that, though, I mean the deck performed pretty well. I can't complain. Um, we we had probably around like a 70 75 percent win rate. Um, and going second wasn't that bad. Going first was pretty good, obviously. Uh, but the real issue, like I said, uh, I, I lost a lot of games to Nibiru, but that's only when I was in gold because people don't know what they're doing. So they're playing Nibiru, even though it's bad in this format, but it fucks our deck over. Uh, so I lost a few games in Nibiru. Um, so I think if I didn't lose those, it wouldn't be that bad. I think my win rate would have been better. Um, but yeah, the deck's really good. I think I think it's good. I think it's fine for the format personally I cannot can you climb to master one with it? Uh, I guess we're gonna find out if it really really gets uh Bad later up in the in the uh, rankings um, it, it might be a tough climb. Let's just say that if you're not playing tier element I think it's probably gonna be a tough climb regardless um, But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys want me to play next. So have a good one guys. Bye